Welcome to art class. My name is Allison Greenhouse. I am so excited to be here with you today. Uh, I'm collaborating with ACTV to bring this series on art making and creativity. So join me at home and we're going to get art supplies together. We're going to talk about art supplies. We're going to talk about building art skills. We're going to talk about creativity. This class, art class, <laughs> this art class can be for kids and adults. You and your kids can do this art class together, or it can be just for adults. Anyone who wants to learn more about art skills, building their art skills, and getting more creative and trying new things, this is the class for you. And I'm super excited to be here. Again, my name is Allison Greenhouse. I'm an art teacher. I teach elementary art uh, for Anderson County Schools. And I live in Anderson County. And I'm an art teacher. I'm an artist. I, I love to make stuff. I love making stuff. <laughs> and I'm really excited about all these art supplies. We're going to talk about art supplies today. Um, and OK, <laughs> let's dive in. Today's class is going to be all about watercolor basics. Watercolor is probably my favorite art medium, and there's a lot of different reasons why. One is uh, watercolor supplies are pretty reasonably priced and really accessible. You can get watercolor supplies at a lot of standard stores like Walmart and Hobby Lobby and you know local places. Uh, also, you can order a lot of things from Amazon. So it's easy to come by, relatively inexpensive, and really easy to clean up. So for those reasons, I really enjoy working with watercolor. I also love watercolor because it's very magical how the paint and the colors mix together, and it's in, in really unexpected ways. And you have to kind of let go of some of the control as an artist and just let the paint do its thing. And so that's, that's pretty cool. I think that's a really great thing about watercolor. So we're going to um, dive in first to talking about the actual watercolor supplies. I have a variety of paints. Let's talk about the paints first. The paint tray that I'm going to be using for this class today is the Crayola Education watercolors, and it's the 16 uh, pack. This pack comes with a pretty decent little paintbrush. Most of my uh, students at school uh, use this paintbrush that comes with the pack. It's a size seven round brush, and we will talk more about brushes also. There's a difference though, not all Crayola paint is created equally. This is the Education Watercolors. And I don't think you can buy this like at Walmart. I think you can, you can get it at Hobby Lobby, probably at Michael's. I ordered this off Amazon. This is what you can pick up at Walmart. This is the washable. You see that? It's washable. And it is not as good, I don't think. I love these. This is, I use these a lot in my classroom. These uh, just don't last very long. The pigment is not very rich. The brush it comes with is kind of like a trash brush. <laughs> I keep these brushes, these types of brushes, and use them when we have to use like paint glue or something. So this is not my favorite. Crayola makes great supplies for kids and adults. This one though, the washable, is definitely not my favorite. Uh, of the watercolors. I love this educational one. It comes in a six or a, no, it's not six. It comes in an eight or a 16. The cool thing about this pack too, which I use in the art room, is these pop out. And so, of course, I always run out of blue, red, and yellow first, the primaries. And so I can buy replacements and pop those back in, and that makes the trays last a lot longer. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to be painting with this one today, but let's talk about a little bit, um, a couple of other brands, because I know when you go to the art store or even like the Hobby Lobby or whatever you look and it is really overwhelming. So my personal 
this is my personal tray that I paint with at home. And I bought this uh, palette from Amazon. And then I use tube uh, watercolor and I squeeze the tube into the tray. And actually last year I bought these for my, my big kids, my third, fourth, and fifth graders at school. My little kids still use the Crayola, but I've started setting up these trays for my big kids at school. And I have tried out several different tubes uh, from Amazon for my students. This one's called, this is my favorite one, Oh Hoo Hoo. <laughs> it's called Oh Hoo Hoo. That's probably not how you pronounce that. <laughs> but, but that's what that one is. That's this, this brand is my favorite so far. And this uh, comes with really nice uh, brushes when I ordered those online from Amazon. This is Art Creation. This one's good too. I like this one, but it doesn't have a, this one has a really big variety of colors. And this one I ordered to try, this is Pentel. Pentel's a really good art brand, but the tubes are really small for the money. These other ones were better for the cost. So anyway, the two, I squeeze this into the palette and then you just let that dry overnight and you've got a paint palette full of uh, watercolor paints. And of course you have to activate them with water, watercolor, right? But I've started using these and it lasts so long. It's not pretty. My, <laughs> my palette is not pretty, but it looks great. I mean, they work great and they last a long time. The other one I have here that I wanted to show you is this little Winsor & Newton. Winsor & Newton makes amazing professional level paints. So if you're, if you're wanting to go up a level from the Crayola, Winsor & Newton, the only thing I don't like about this, you see how small those are? I, it's too small for me. This would be a great little travel set, but I just need more. I need more there. It's too little. But, but a great brand. Winsor & Newton's a great brand. Uh, a lot more expensive. This is like 10 or 12 bucks. This one was probably like 20. Maybe not 20. It came with a little brush. I can't remember how much this was. I've had it for a few years. But anyway, so there's the paints. We're gonna paint with this today. Okay, let's talk about brushes. I told you this one, uh, this little Crayola round brush is a great brush uh, for, you know, what you pay for. It comes with the set. My favorite brush is Princeton brand, the Snap brush. And when you're looking for watercolor brushes, you want a round brush. My favorite size is a 12 or like a nine or 10. Okay, these are the sizes. You want a round brush. You want soft bristles. The snap brushes also have these flat brushes and a lot of times you can use those for a wash. I don't ever really use the flat ones for a wash. I would use these with my acrylic work. Another day, everybody, another day. We're gonna talk about acrylic paint, but um, I always use round with watercolor. Okay, let's talk. I brought some not so great brushes. Look at this brush. See how rough the bristles are? They're just, I don't even know what I would use this for. I mean, you could just scr maybe scrub. It's like a toothbrush. Don't use this brush for watercolor. It's flat and it's, the bristles are really rough. So this is no good. This one, this comes in like a, like a kid's watercolor set. See those bristles? Not good, don't use that. So, oh, this one, no good, don't use this. Having the right brush is gonna make life a lot better for you. So a round brush, I love the Princeton brand. Uh, these are also good. This is the, this brand right here, this is Royal and Lang Nickel. That's a really good brand and you can get those relatively inexpensive. All right, so we've talked about the paint, we've talked about the brushes. We're gonna talk about paper. Okay, paper's a big deal, you guys, because if you're not painting on watercolor paper, you're not gonna feel really successful. I would spend the money, if I was gonna spend the money on something, it would be on the paper. I would rather use an inexpensive paint, buy a decent brush and decent watercolor paper. I'm gonna be painting on the Strathmore, this is a student grade watercolor paper. This is great for beginners. You just don't want to paint on like cardstock or copy paper. It's, it just doesn't work. 
you're not going to get that magical blend of colors. So just buy actual watercolor paper. I like cold press, watercolor paper. Strathmore is a good one. Uh, this Canson XL is a good student watercolor paper. Uh, and then Arches is really expensive. And I use it some, um, but for practice, I really like the Canson or this a Strathmore. And today I'm going to be painting on this one. So there's the paper. We've got the paint. We've got the brushes. We will need uh, two cups of water. So I've got my dirty water, and then I've got what's going to be my clean water. And we're just going to start with some experimenting. We're going to play with the brush. We're going to see what the brush does. And we're just going to experiment with the paints. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to use my spray bottle to wet my paints. You don't have to do that, but I feel like it kind of gets everything activated. And I'm going to work on a half sheet. Sometimes I find if I'm just playing around, if I will cut my paper in half, it's less stressful. It feels like less wasteful if I'm just playing around. So I have, I keep the, one of these at my house. Um, it's just a paper cutter. And I just slide this in, cut this in half. And then, you know, I have less um, commitment to this little half sheet, you know. So we're just gonna play and I'm gonna wet my brush. Let's see. I'm gonna just start with, oh, this pink. I love this pink in this set. And I'm going to just start by making some different thicknesses of lines to see what this brush does. So I can do thin lines, or I can press all the way down and do a thicker line. Notice the difference in value. This one's darker, and this one's lighter. What happens when I do this? So if you're just starting out, Give yourself permission to just play with the supplies. Don't start out trying to say, okay, I'm going to paint a landscape. It's, it's not reasonable to think that you're just going to start by painting the landscape. So give yourself permission to just explore the paint, see what it does, try different things. Maybe try where you do like thin, then thick, then thin, then thick, right? Give yourself time to try some different things. I always like to keep paper towels handy if things get too wet. I can always dab on the paper towel, but you do want a wet brush. One thing that um, I tell my students a lot, they always want to squeeze all the water out of there. Well, you, the brush has to be wet in order for the paint to work, and that's part of the magic. Okay, so right now, all of these experiments are on dry paper, and this is called wet on dry. Okay, when we're painting with watercolor paints, there's some different techniques. This is the wet on dry technique because I have a wet brush and a dry piece of paper. So first, you know, fill up two or three whole sheets or the half sheets of different experiments. Try every single color, see what it does, play around with your brushes. Now if I was using a smaller brush, this is the snap. That one was the 12, which I love. I love painting with a big brush, but this is the snap. This is the six. So if you get a pack and there's a couple different brushes in there, try some different sizes and see what they do, right? Obviously you're going to get a different line quality if you're using a different size brush. You're not going to hurt the brush by pushing down on it. I tell my students, don't give the paintbrush a bad hair day when they, sm when they smash it down. <laughs> no bad hair days. OK, so I am just going to fill up this whole page with different types of lines, really exploring uh, the supplies. Once this dries, a lot of times if I'm just at home playing around, once it dries, I flip it over and paint on the other side too. 
So let's try some, a couple other things. So that was the wet on dry technique. And when you do the wet on dry, your paint doesn't move much. And so far I haven't tried to blend any colors together. So now I'm gonna use this clean water and I'm gonna wet an area on my paper with the clean water. And this is why you wanna have clean water and, and uh, rinsing water, because this water is gonna get dirty pretty quickly. And if you try to do a wash of wet uh, water on your, on your paper, it's gonna be kind of gray. All right, so I'm just gonna do a circle on here. Just a wet, I'm just wetting the paper right there. And then, oh, when I teach this to the kids, they lose their minds. This is so cool. You just let that, just let that go and see what happens. This is the magic, everybody. <laughs> this is the magic I was talking about. It's so magical. Try to put a second color in there and see what happens. Just play, give yourself permission to play and do not stress out about things being right or you know, is this good? I play all the time. My recycling bin is full of stuff like this just because I'm just experimenting with it. Then you can also see what happens like if you, turn, if you tipped it. See how it's staying inside the circle where I, right, where I laid down the water? Now if I tipped it, it would drip, right? But it really stays right where I put it inside the water. Let's try another one here. Oh, I'm gonna do another circle. Oh, look what happened there. Can you see it? It's starting, to, it's starting to bleed in. If you let them touch, they're gonna bleed into each other. Again, super magical. Anything that you let touch when it's really wet, they're gonna bleed into each other, which I kind of like. Watch that. Ooh, it's so cool. Another kind of art that I really like is mixed media art where you take multiple different materials like acrylic paint and magazines and Mod Podge and you, you know, markers and pens and all the things and put them all together. We'll do another class on that another day. I would, I think you guys will enjoy that. Here's another spot for a circle. Again, this is the wet on wet. Just going to let things bleed together. What happens when I put a little yellow in there? Just drip it in. Watch it go, it's like crystals. Now, there's a couple things you can do if you, now I'm looking at this and I'm like, man, I wish I hadn't dripped that. That is driving me nuts. I can take my paper towel and I can blot that. You can also take a clean brush. A lot of times if you have a decent watercolor paper, you can kind of erase or back that off a little bit. Let's see what else. I want to do another circle right up against this one. Back to my big brush though. Now you got to be careful with your colors because if I put, this is purple and kind of like a green, if I put too much orange or yellow up against there and it mixes together, it's going to turn brown. It's one of the things I teach the kids. We look at the color wheel. Colors that are directly across from each other on the color wheel are uh, complementary colors like purple and yellow, red and green, and blue and orange. Well, they look really good next to each other. They make each other look brighter, but on top of each other, they turn brown. So we got to be careful if we're going to let this bleed, not to put the, the colors that are going to make that bleed. So I'm going to try red, although there's a little green in there, but I'm going to go for it. That turquoise, I don't think is going to mess this up too bad. And then, oops. A little drip there. See how that just went away? That's cool. And maybe a little purple in here.
This is looking really cool. Now there's a couple other techniques you can use. There's the wet on dry that we talked about where you just paint directly on the paper. There is the wet on wet, which we're doing now. Then you can also take a paper towel and lift off some of the paint to make an interesting texture. You can also do this, and I didn't bring any saran wrap, but you can also do this technique with saran wrap where you lift off uh, certain amounts with saran wrap, which is kind of cool. Uh, I've also done things like this with my students where we drip little drips uh, with a with like a pipette of rubbing alcohol, and it does some cool things. So if you're at home and you have rubbing alcohol, give that a try, because that's really fun. Uh, in my next class, we're going to look at some more watercolor. We're going to start on some more compositions, less of plain and trying to do more of a composition in the next class, and we're going to add some salt, which is another really cool uh, watercolor technique. So a lot of times it's just stuff you have around the house that you can experiment with. I'm going to let those two touch and see what happens. This one's already pretty dry, but the orange is starting to go in there. Now we could, we're going to play around with this some more uh, in a little bit. I'm going to let this dry and we're going to talk about a couple other things and then we're going to come back and add some stuff to this one. Let's see. I'm not doing a good job of using my clear water. I just keep going back to the dirty water and using it, but that's okay. There's no rules here, everybody. There we go. All right, so I think I'm done with this for now. I'm going to let this one dry. Something else that's kind of fun to play around with is looking at value and trying to figure out how much water uh, is needed when you're using the watercolor paint. Having control of your water or using too much water or not enough water can affect your work when you get into more of a composition. So let's take a closer look at that. So what I'm gonna do is get another one of my little half sheets. Again, we're still just plain, uh, but once you get done just kind of experimenting with your paints, you might wanna try this. Let's see, I'm gonna swap out. I'm gonna try this. This is that Royal and Lang nickel brush. Okay, and I'm just gonna do wet on dry. Remember, that's the technique where your paper's dry and we're just gonna put the wet paint on there. Really wet brush. Just kind of wipe the drips off. I'm going to start with red and I'm just going to load my brush up with paint and I'm just going to take the paint and I'm going to come across like this with the brush. Then I'm going to rinse my brush and come with just a wet brush and add some more water and see if you can adjust the value. Value is the lightness or darkness of a color. So I want this end to be really dark with the paint and then let the paint get lighter because I'm adding more water. It's always really exciting to see my students. They, if they're using a limited color palette and they want pink or they want gray, they say, how can I make pink? I'm like, well, just add more water to your red. Or how can I make gray? Just add more water to your black. And it really, they get really excited when they see that you can, you know, the, the watercolor is capable of changing value just by adding the water. It's pretty cool. Let's do a little bit more here. So I have a lot of adults who tell me, Oh, Allison, I wish I was more creative. Oh, I wish I was better at art. Well, here's, here's, the, here's the thing. <laughs> you got to practice. And you're going to get better if you practice. Just like if you want to get really good at throwing free throws. You know, you have to be outside on, in your driveway throwing free throws for an hour every afternoon. <laughs> you, you're going to get better at it. So... Practice is really important, and we just have to make time for it, you know. It doesn't have, what you make doesn't have to be perfect. You uh, don't have to show anybody, you know, but just have fun and try different things, 
and don't be afraid. You know, if you want to try this, go run to Hobby Lobby and get the watercolor paper, a set of paints, and a brush, and just sit down. It's really fun if you do it with some kids. I, I, like, I like kids, especially elementary age kids, because they're not afraid to try things. So, you know, sit down with your kids or your grandkids or your neighbor kids or whoever and just try some of this stuff and just play. Look at how pretty that looks. That's just some value scale work and it is really pretty. You could even just like turn this into a card. More water, I'm gonna add some more water to this. I'm gonna try black. I haven't done any black yet. There's that gray. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, that looks good. Okay, let's play a little bit more back with the circle thing. My circle one that I did before is um, still wet, but I have this other one that I worked on the other day. This was one that I was just playing around with. And I want to add some pen work on top of this. It, one of my favorite things to do is doodle and Anyone who sat with me in a staff meeting knows that I just like to doodle and listen and doodle and listen. And the more you doodle, the more you make marks and lines and, you know, it builds muscle memory and you really do get better at making your marks, you know, through that muscle memory. I made this, uh, this little abstract mark making idea sheet. Maybe I can scan this in and post it on my Facebook page or on my Instagram page so you guys can see it. Um, but this is just some ideas. And you can just take a pen. I'm going to move this so it doesn't get wet. I have a couple different pens here. Let's look. This is a black Sharpie, fine tip black Sharpie. You could use that. Flare pen, my favorite. <laughs> I love a flare pen. Now, the, no, you have to note, though, the flare pen is not permanent. So if you're planning on going back on top of this with more water, your flare pen's going to bleed. Look here. See that? Which is kind of cool sometimes if that's your intention. The Sharpie is permanent, so it's not going anywhere. Uh, I have a couple other things here. This Somehow I made it out of the house without a black Tombow. These are, oh, I love these. This is the Tombow dual brush pen. These are also not permanent, though. That's a gray one. But, but they are nice to add line with. So that one's going to wash out. So you got to be careful. This is uh, just a Crayola super tip, right? Again, not permanent. So you got to think, like, what am I going to do with this? Do, am I going to add more watercolor on top? If it's yes, then you got to go with a permanent pen. If it's no, then you can use any, like the flare pen. I'm going to use the flare pen, I think. But you can use a Sharpie. I think that's about all I got in here, Sharpie. There's some other Tombows. I got all kinds of stuff in there. So let's just play. I'm just going to start by putting the circle around this. I love circles. I love making lines. Anything like this, just, it's almost like therapy for me. Just some quiet time, listening to some music or put on your favorite podcast. Relax a little bit on the weekends or in the evenings. And just, you know, you can't do anything wrong. There's no wrong way to do this, but it is going to build your muscle memory. It's going to build your creative skills and it's going to build your art skills. You can also put things on the outside edge in the white space. You can try different kinds of lines around the edge. I did one, this one. Oh, talk about 
like a Zen moment. I just started with the flare. I guess it was a flare pen. It looks like it was. And I started just going around and around and around after I did these little watercolor circles. Now you could fold yourself a piece of paper and glue that on top. There's a card right there. Send that to your mother. She will, she will love getting that in the mail. <laughs> that is cute. I've got a, I think I have another one here that I was working on that was circles. Hold on. I, and like, I find my inspiration in all kinds of places. Oh, I don't know where that other one is, but do you guys ever shop at Ollie's? We love Ollie's. This was $1.99 at Ollie's. And there's all kinds of ideas in here in this book. It's a flower book, but it just teaches line. Again, building muscle memory, playing with markers, just building that creative um, creativity. And then if you've played with this a little bit and you've kind of you know goofed around with the with the book, then the next time you are working on something like this. You kind of have ideas of what to put down, or you can always go back and look. I also look at Pinterest a lot. I just put in like flower doodles, and I look at stuff on there and get ideas. This is another fun thing to do is just get some, oh, I got paint on there. Whoopsie. Uh, get some blank paper. I use this marker pad just because it's gentler on my markers. You know, it doesn't dry the markers out as bad, but any kind of paper. And just start making marks and lines, and I think I have another one in here. You know, playing around. Just a great way to build creativity. And you'll notice in our next class, uh, we're going to do some more composition work. And we're going to be using the watercolor with the pen work again. So practice this. Uh, practice your value. Let's look here. Practice your value. This one was the value. Practice your lines. Try the wet on dry. Just play around with this different ideas. This is the circle one, which we kind of started playing with on here. But just play with it and see what happens. I want to see it though. If you, <laughs> the, okay. The reason I like in-person classes so much is I actually get to see your work and I get bummed out. Now I don't get to see your work. So if you make something that you're like, oh, this, I'm really happy with how this turns out, or you and your kids are painting together, I want you to take a picture. And my uh, Facebook and Instagram are G House Studio. So you can send me a message with your picture of what you made because I just, I wanna see it. I get so excited whenever I get to see what people are making. And so send me a message and tell me, you know, like, oh, we got our supplies, Miss Greenhouse. We're so excited to paint. I want to I wanna hear from you. And, you know, I'm just going to sit here and doodle <laughs> for the rest of the night. I could do this all day. I love it. There we go. There's no, there's no right or wrong. Just keep, just keep making stuff. Okay, I guess I've done enough for tonight. I'm delighted to be uh, sharing some things with you about art and creativity. And I look forward to our next uh, art class together. Get some paints and try some things. Send me a message if you make something awesome, or if you make something terrible, send it to me anyway, and I'll say, keep trying, it's gonna be fine. It's not a big deal, it's just for fun. And uh, thanks for joining me, and I will see you next time, bye.